So today I've got this nice Steinway S. It needs a little bit of juicing in the bass. I've already juiced the other part of the piano quite a bit, but the bass needs more, so I'm back. First thing I like to do, of course, is to evaluate which notes need what, but also to tune up uh, the bass strings to make sure that they're really speaking upward. Here I'm just squeezing to see how hard these hammers are in the various spots down in the, the bottom part by the staple, the upper shoulders. It seems like they've got a decent amount of hardness here, right above the molding. They don't have a lot of fundamental kind of push, so I think we're going to juice them down here at the bottom. This is what we're using today. This is uh, 8 ounces of straight acetone with two teaspoons of ground up key top, you know, like this stuff, except uh, my personal favorite is uh, actually Yamaha brand key tops. They seem to be a little softer than other brands, sound better. We're gonna put it in one of these so we can squeeze it out. All right, so it's always good to have paper towel. We're gonna be juicing up here on both sides, all right, and then the other side. So let's do it. We're gonna skip, we're gonna skip that one. Like about there. So I'm making sure to make that it penetrates all the way down to the wood here. This is not just the outside, when I get all the way to the molding. If you don't, then the hardener the next time around will not get deep enough. You end up with a shell, where if you needed to do this again, it wouldn't penetrate past what you've already done. Let me get a close up of that. All right, take a look. All right to there. Now this is acetone, which flashes off pretty fast. So by the time this is uh, looking dry, it probably is dry. And we can go ahead and take a listen. The idea here is we're reinforcing the area down by the staple, trying not to get too much into this shoulder area. Because then we reinforce the middle and the upper area. We're leaving this softer, right there. Just the same way that you needle out. Where did I stop? You needle out this area to make it softer and hard hammers. Well, when you're juicing hammers like these, soft hammers, you don't want to juice that area. You can't needle it. It's already soft. But if you harden it with chemicals, yeah, there's no going back. So while I'm waiting for the base to dry, I'm going to juice up some of these, the top areas of the hammer to give them a bit more punch, more presence. Um, this is not necessarily going to make things brighter. This um, solution 
we'll, the, the, the hardness here will break up a bit. So it's bright at first, you play it a little bit, bang into the keys, and this will break up and you'll start to get not so much a brighter sound, because I'm gonna put it here on the outside of the string groups, but just a bit more impact. Um, we're up in the area where the, on the right hand, the pinky and, you know, definitely not the thumb and the bigger fingers. Usually the smaller fingers are playing these notes. They need to have enough punch so that you're not dying with your little, your little pinky finger trying to get the sound out. So we're just gonna do a drops on each side. One, two, three, four, like that. I've got paper towel down there just in case I make a mess. This is acetone. Um, you cannot get this on the piano finish. Obviously not on the key tops. It will just eat right through. Um, not like acid or something, but it will just make a big kind of ugly mar. Like a divot. On the back side, we don't have to be super careful, but we're not, not putting this on top kind of at the end of the string groove and then let it splash down into the shoulder. And I've skipped a couple of notes right in here because they actually have enough sound. And we're gonna do something similar um, up in the treble area. So this is the sound I was talking about. Like that. So now as I play through, um, that sound will start to go away. some of the notes need more. I'm going to pick out the ones that are still a little poofy sounding. Like this is good, but the next one, not so much. Or like this, very poofy. So I already know that the bass is poofy, so we're just going to go right into it. I don't need to uh, audition which notes and stuff. Watch out, it always comes out fast. That's what the paper towel's for. Five or six drops. Give a little distance so they really drop. Don't just, uh, you know, jam them in there. Let them drop into the hammer, soak in. just firming up the outside area, you know, the outside layer of the upper shoulder, which still needs to be flexible. Right? We're not trying to stiffen this as much as we are, well, stiffen. We are stiffening it. We're not trying to make it harder. We're just trying to make it slightly less flexible. Now, here we come to to hitting some drops on the top. I'm skipping this hammer, it's got enough, enough bite. Here we want to be very careful. We test out our drop flow on the paper towel, and we want nice three drops. That's it. Boom, boom, boom. From high up. Make it really sink in. These are little drops, but 
just the falling action can get them to go in a couple millimeters have a bit more effect to it with less less plastic now putting less in here is better so while I'm waiting for that to dry we can reestablish the shift pedal sound I already did those hammers I'll do the center no change and then the treble, top treble Pretty simple. Let's look at that. Alright, so we're just going to be using this three needle tool. We're going to be placing it right in between the string grooves. Probably going about halfway down the needles. So that's like three, three and a half millimeters, something like that. Nothing too, too heavy duty. Just a little bit at a time. If it's not heavy enough, we can come back. We can go further out away from the center of the hammer but either way staying off of the string grooves. Some of the ones like these are hard to see because the um, little carbon tracing stuff is gone but I can see it in the shadow and so I will just hit all of these and take a listen. This also acts to kind of even out the sound of the hammer in general um, so you you know we're voicing up and up and up and this kind of softens out some of the nasty sounds that you have to get to anyway so it's a good kind of two for one. Here's the note. Here's the neighbor notes. This one's got a little extra. And the character of the section is more like this. Outside of all this voicing, really the issue is that the hammer is kind of in a bad spot. Let's fix that. So the issue here is it travels straight, but it just needs to be turned. So we're going to put a uh, piece of travel paper here. This is probably two thousandths of an inch, so we can go pretty slow. We need to tilt it this way, so we travel that side to make it taller. Gotta get it all the way up to the end. Like that. Use my little razor thing here to cut it off at the very end. Some people like to pull it out. I don't want to see it. Just just my thing. So we can see here in the area that actually this kind of whole group of hammers is way off to the left. So Let's reposition these. We have to revoice. It may screw up our voicing, but the tone's going to suffer more if they're out of alignment. You can see by these string grooves that the center of the hammer is way off. This one you can't see the groove, but it's way over there. I took the travel paper off that one. This one's further out. This one looks more centered. It's kind of an optical illusion in the piano. It doesn't look centered, but. That one seems okay. It's these three that really are far out. They may need to be traveled. The spacing between them and against the whippings is okay. So we may have to just travel the head and tilt them and see what works. Okay, here we go. Much better. Yeah, it doesn't look better, but it is better. It's hard to get the angle. Yeah, these are, and they sound better. Got a bright note here. 
from juicing the tops. So we'll do a little voicing there and then we'll call it a day. So voicing out hot spots is much easier here. We're just going to take our three needle tool and there's the string groove. Boom. Maybe just a few of those. Right on the end of it. Don't go too far up. Because the, f the felt is reinforced with the plastic that was dissolved into the acetone, it's not like a hard pressed hammer where a deep, deep dive will uh, kill the hammer. This will take off the edge and you can be more careful um, with um, the string groove itself, but not as careful around it as you have to be with a hard pressed hammer. Let's see how it sounds. Thank you. 